Hey guys, VBAD here with another V Plays, and we are taken out to the bow fighter at tier 5. And this is going to be a British heavy fighter. This aircraft has a very interesting turret configuration because it is going to be four Browning machine guns mounted in this turret that can actually spin at 360 degrees. So depending on how the aircraft that you're chasing is in front of you, you could theoretically get a total of 10 Browning 303s on target and four 20 millimeter Hispanos. Although I wouldn't bank on that because you'd have to really be engaging for a while for this turret to spin his happy butt all the way around to the forward position and I'm not entirely sure he'd be able to get on the same line of fire that you'd have to be on as well but it is interesting uh, it almost looks like a top hat on this aircraft or like a little chef hat that he's wearing the British heavy fighters don't have the best altitude performance overall in fact you can see here we're getting eh, about 5,000 feet which isn't terrible but if you were to compare it to some other aircraft, especially later down the line, we're going to be at a bit of a disadvantage. Now, the bow fighter does get the advantage of having a 420 millimeter Hispanos mounted under the nose, but it also has four Browning 303s in this wing and then two in this wing because apparently you need to have a light in the front of the aircraft. We are going to rely heavily on boom and zoom tactics, lining up on an aircraft, getting those main cannons to hit, and hopefully a trit away an enemy aircraft very rapidly because we're not really going to be able to stay on a target too long like what we're seeing right here that just isn't going to work out for us there we go so we got to get that damage out as fast as possible and try and knock these airframes out now we got somebody on our six is that a heavy fighter i think it is Let's go after the enemy aircraft. Come on, he's got big old 40s on him we don't want to play with. That's the guy we don't want to mess with either. Okay, so we actually have... What is this? Is that a ground attacker? Yeah, it is. There, I think we just picked up the zone with the rockets. We finally got the engines back up. Like I said, sniping out aircraft with these main guns. That's what we're looking for. We may die to this ground attacker. I'm fully expecting that to be a thing. Yeah, he's got four 20 millimeter cannons, but we managed to not only capture the zone, but potentially we will be able to pick up the other command center as well, which is really in something that my other portion of my team is doing. The bow fighter does get a very, fairly impressive air to ground loadout and I've found that flying British heavies a lot more like a multi-role ends up yielding better results. That means finding opportunities, trying to maintain speed and not doing what I was doing over that site which is turning excessively against enemy aircraft but picking an, a single target, trying to isolate it and then gunning it down early in kind of an all or nothing approach with the main guns. Now we can counter bombers fairly effectively as well because we do have a lot of DPM for the tier group. But we also have this air to ground ordinance we can drop as well. So that's another reason I kind of compare it a lot to flying a multi roll. What do we got down here? That guy, he's more of a threat than I think my team realizes. So we really need to get over there. Oh, we managed to take something out. I'm looking for that bomber. There he is. Asking you shall receive. Let's find a better engagement angle. We're almost going to get like parallel to him and then turn in so that way we can maintain guns on him longer without having to essentially overshoot the target. But bam, we took that aircraft out. We lost a lot of airspeed as a result, but we were able to maintain engagement. Now that is P-38 human controlled. Let's go after the P-38. There we go. Ground attack aircraft. We're maintaining pretty decent speed for the tier. There we go. We're not trying to overperform the aircraft. We're just trying to be a little bit more graceful in our engagements here. 
fully expecting the enemy to come back this way, but we're going to make our way in between the two zones so that we can effectively defend both, but also maintain good position. Trying to keep a bit of boost in reserve. That's a human-controlled BF-109. But this aircraft is actually more of a threat for the time being. Okay, we're going to turn. Tail gunner managed to take out his engine. And we will turn back around on that target. That is a heavy... It's the P-38 again. We have good range on the 20s. So let's take advantage of that. Oh, the P-38's back. Now he is going after the P-38. We're going to hit the boost cooler. Try and get some of that back. And the P-38 is doing a classic boom and zoom run. He tried to engage that other aircraft. It didn't work out to his advantage, so he just left the engagement. Couple of good hits in. We do see a light fighter up here, Bristol. Oh, we didn't really get a chance to do much else after that. So we'll throw up the GG to everyone. And 8,855 personal points. We overperformed our aircraft a little bit early on in this match, but overall we were able to perform quite well. Uh, isolating those targets, making smart decisions later on. Uh, we got a little bit lucky that we were able to gain control of the zone at the beginning because uh, I was, again, overperforming the airframe. But like I said, the thing has a fairly impressive overall forward firepower as well as an impressive payload. The payload on this aircraft is going to be a combination of two 500-pound bombs as well as eight air-to-ground rockets. So as you can see right here, we do have a cumulative damage of mm, about 17,000 ground damage, which again at this tier is fairly robust. The forward firing armament, we're getting 470 damage per second from this aircraft. We did put the long barrels on here because I don't have too much of an issue with the Hispano Mark 1s overheating currently, and I'm not going to have an issue with the Brownings really overheating by comparison. So. Being able to get those shots on target early is going to be much more important for an aircraft like this because we want to get maximum amount of time that we're causing damage, potentially getting a critical on the enemy aircraft before we fully committed to trying to take that aircraft out. The airspeed is going to pale in comparison to something like the American P-38 or even really the you know, Tier 5 tier six compared to like the p38 f you're looking at 392 miles an hour on this aircraft or if you were looking at the german aircraft as well the bf 110 is going to be able to kick out 348 miles per hour so our 313 just really isn't going to cut it so while it is technically a heavy fighter based on the class the way that it performs is going to fall more in line with the multi-role uh, it's just a lot more firepower so i do enjoy it i think it's nice I, that's why i decided to keep it and i also kept the what was it the uh, mosquito the hornet and i've also kept the p110 or p1056 which is going to be at tier 8 all of which have very similar ways of being played Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at the bow fighter with me. This battle was a fairly quick one. And again, these tier 5 matches with the three capture zones are very limiting. But we got a lot of capture points. We did a, li a lot while we were defending. And we only really captured the single sector. We never really dropped the bombs or the rockets, but they were there if we needed them. We did go with the reduced reload time, but the overall reload at base is going to be 180 seconds, so the 155 we currently have is actually going to be much better than what it could be. But as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you on the next one.